welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Joey. This is gonna be a little bit change of pace of kind of the cheerful vlogs and videos that I normally put out. This video is something that took a lot of courage for me to finally film and it's taken me about six, seven years to finally be okay to make a video of what exactly happened to me when I lost hearing and when I was severely sick. So a little backstory for those of you who don't know, I am completely deaf in my left ear and this happened when I was 24 years old and it was probably one of the most traumatic and scariest things that has ever happened to me. I think it's really shaped me into who I am today. Ugh. I told myself I was not gonna cry. I just did my makeup. It's not crying. Yeah, so this happened when I was 24 and it was a very impactful time in my life. I never felt resentful that something like this happened to me because I think it's given me so much courage and strength that maybe was something that I actually needed, even though this situation was very painful and negative at the time. Basically what happened was in May, when I was 24 years old, I woke up with extreme vertigo and nausea. It was so bad to the point where I actually couldn't even sit up. I like rolled out of bed and I was immediately nauseous and I knew something was terribly wrong. So obviously I called for help. Thankfully, I was still living at home at the time and my parents quickly brought me to emergency. And this is kind of the really sad part is my experience with our healthcare system. I think it is great that there's free healthcare for people who need it. But unfortunately for my case, my experience with our healthcare system, it truly in the most simplest terms it just failed me and i think that was one of the what ifs and questions that i still have sometimes to this day oh what if i could have gotten help sooner what if they took my case seriously so once i got to emerge obviously at that moment because the vertigo and nausea was so bad I did not realize that I had any other symptoms. And so when I got to eMERGE and was admitted, they basically just gave me gravel and sent me on my way, didn't check anything else, possible exams or anything. They just gave me gravel, sent me home. It was a really stressful week because I felt terrible. Like. I was bedridden and I couldn't work. I couldn't do anything. And I remember telling my mom, telling her that I think, I think something is seriously wrong. I need to get more answers. I need to see a doctor. So we went to emergency at several different hospitals, just hoping that someone would take a look at my case and my situation and give me some answers because with the days going by nothing was getting better and it occurred to me around the fifth or seventh day after getting that vertigo that i couldn't hear out of one ear as soon as the vertigo and nausea was subsiding i felt an extreme amount of fullness in my left ear i just i didn't know what to make of it and I couldn't figure out what exactly was wrong, but I knew there was something wrong with my ear. The fullness was making, like I just thought it, the fullness was making me not be able to hear. Not that like I had hearing loss, hence why it was giving me this fullness feeling in my ear. And I guess now looking back, I remember I was having dinner the night before everything went down and I felt some discomfort in my ear. It was probably the feel, the fullness feeling I was getting and I just figured my ears were dirty and I needed to clear my earwax or something. And I remember I was like, okay, I'm just gonna clean my ears and hope for the best. 
I went to my family doctor and she did a few tests and it was very evident at that point that I couldn't hear out of that ear at all. So I was sent off to get a hearing test done. And thankfully my mom's friend, she worked at a hearing clinic and got me in straight away. Yeah, the results showed that it was what we were worried about and that I had zero hearing out of that ear. And I think at that point it was it was very scary. I didn't, didn't know how to process this information. Like I was 24 years old and you think a 24 year old would be healthy. There would be nothing, um, there would be nothing like this would happen. So once the hearing results came in, it was sent to my family doctor. And from there I was given a referral to see the ENT. And that was when things got very frustrating because it was very evident something was wrong. There were no logical answers as to why it was happening. So at that point, it was really fighting with healthcare professionals to get the help that I needed. It was very difficult at the time and I'm so grateful for my parents because they were honestly there for me every step of the way. We went to Emerge so many times and they were always there for me. We went to Emerge so many times and they were waiting for hours with me. And I remember be feeling so frustrated because clearly like we had reports from my family doctor, um, we had the hearing test results and with all the symptoms I was having, it was definitely not just a random thing and that it was good, I was gonna be able to recover on my own. I saw numerous emergency doctors. It was almost like I was begging them to just take a look and see what they can do, see if an EAT could just come and see because from what I knew at that time with hearing loss, there's a golden period where you may be able to recover some hearing I felt like I was fighting against the clock and I was also fighting against the healthcare system to take this case seriously. And I think it was the last hospital visit that we did. At that point, I don't know how many times we went to the hospital. The emergency doctor didn't even look at me. I've been waiting there for like six hours, feeling very sick, waiting there for six hours. And she just walked in and she's like, there's nothing I can do for you. You should just go home. And at that point, I just felt so helpless. I knew the wait time to see an ENT is quite long. So I was like very worried that nothing would be done. At that point with the hearing loss, it was very difficult to navigate this daily life. I fully understand why we're given, you know, two eyes, two ears you need both for a reason for me when i lost hearing there were so many little things that i didn't realize i would be so affected by Lo losing complete hearing in that one ear when you're talking to people obviously you're reduced to 50 percent hearing but not only that it's with one working ear that can hear you're getting overwhelmed by so many sounds like in very loud places, it can be extremely difficult. At the time, I hadn't gotten the skills to navigate partial hearing. So I was struggling a lot with just like communicating with people, listening to things. It was also a safety hazard too, because at that time I couldn't even localize where sound was coming from. At this point, it was two weeks in to my hearing loss. My mom, out of like, you know, out of desperation, my mom was doing a ton of research to kind of hopefully get answers elsewhere because we just weren't getting it from our immediate healthcare system. And she came across this um, hyperbaric oxygen treatment case study that the Foothills was doing. She had requested my family doctor send 
all the records and see if I was a good candidate for that. Thankfully, you know, when they received all the information about my case, they immediately took me in and they put me on a higher priority list of patients to undergo this treatment. I spent hours in this chamber. I would be there for like, I believe it was about three hours in the chamber every single day. And I did this for months on end. I don't have the greatest feelings if I'm ever at Foothills. It definitely um, makes me feel some type of way just because it was such a difficult time every time I did go there. You know, there was always a respiratory therapist there and there was always a doctor observing while I was in this chamber. And um, thankfully they had a TV outside so as I'm laying there in this chamber, I could watch a ton of movies just to pass time. It felt like something was being done and the people that were taking care of me while I was getting that treatment um, were very attentive and it was a very reassuring experience and it was probably the first time since I've been sick at that point that I felt someone cared.